In this video, I speed ran for 10 unique Minecraft deaths, which at first might sound extremely weird, but trust me, it was so much fun. The difficulty of this challenge is much harder than you would expect, as I couldn't simply cheat my way through and die to 10 different mobs, but I had to find 10 completely unique ways to die on a brand new Minecraft world. Will I be able to complete this challenge? Stay tuned to find out. But before we do continue, I'd like to really say that if you do enjoy this style of content and you would like to see more, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so that way you will never miss another upload. I also stream these speedruns live over on my Twitch, so if you do want to experience the entire thing live, the links are down in the description below. But with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Spawning in a fresh new Minecraft world, as you can see, we ended up getting a desert spawn. Now this wasn't just by chance, I did just keep on resetting worlds over and over until I did get the desert spawn that I wanted. But before we do start this entire run, the very first thing that I had to do was set the difficulty to hard mode. Now I'll explain a little bit later as to why we changed the difficulty to hard, and that's not really the focus of this run. But as you can see, right off the start here, I went straight over to a cactus just near my spawn, ran into it and just died straight away. Upon spawning back in for the second time now, I ended up just jumping into a little pit of water that was beneath my feet and also just drowned to death here too. And then after respawning for now the third time, I just broke a bunch of sand from the ground and then suffocated myself and now we were up to three deaths in the span of like a minute. Now the pace on this was looking really, really good. The fourth death that I was going to go for was full damage and there was just very conveniently this really big mesa tower looking thing that was right at my spawn. So I did my best to just grab a bit of sand and climb up as best as I could and then I jumped off the top but I was left with half a heart. But that's okay though, I climbed up a little bit higher and then jumped off again, finished myself off and now we were up to four deaths and I wasn't even three minutes into the run yet. However, the deaths were definitely going to slow down a lot. I got all the easy ones out of the way right off spawn because I figured may as well do them as quick as we can and then we'll go do the harder ones later and of course the next step here was to find a village and to do that we just ran around in the desert. So as you would expect, I just ran off into the open field, trekked through the desert as much as I could, and after a little while, I spotted a village way off into the distance, so I swam through the lake and arrived on the other side. Upon setting foot on the village, I walked into the very first house that I saw and then just got a bed immediately, because this was going to be critical to ensure that I could just move my spawn point wherever I needed it, considering that I was going to be dying a lot in this run. It wasn't shortly after until I found the iron golem as well, so I decided to give him a, a little love tap but I don't think he really liked that, but at least to put our death counter up to five deaths now. But either way, I took the bed that I placed down before to set my spawn point and then just ran around to either look for a temple or a lava pool. Now, the reason why I was looking for a temple isn't for the reason that lots of people normally get temples in speedruns, but this time it was actually for the trap because as you know, temples have TNT in them and a TNT related blowing up death is a unique death that I could use for this run. Now, my other option would be to find a lava pool because of course if I found lava I could just burn to death and that would also count to another death in this run. But after running around for about a solid minute I ended up finding another village which isn't really what I was looking for but blacksmiths do tend to have lava in them so if I could find a blacksmith I could get the lava related death from that instead. However unfortunately for me this village didn't really have anything that I needed. It didn't even really have any food. There was a golem there but I already got my golem death so I just kept running around until I found something else that I might have needed. It wasn't long until I found a ruined portal very close to the village that I had just ran through, and it actually contained a magma block like a lot of ruined portals will do. Now magma blocks I would consider to fall under the same category of deaths like lava and fire, because you do technically still burn to death even though it's a little bit different to the lava and fire that you might be used to. So after placing my bed down, setting my spawn and just standing on the magma block until I died, I broke my bed again and then started scavenging around to try and find the chest in the sand. I ended up giving up pretty quickly though because I didn't have any tools on me, I didn't really have anything at all, and punching that much sand for that long probably wasn't going to be worth it, considering that the ruined portal chest probably wouldn't have anything we needed anyways. So instead, I just ran over to a nearby tree and I got myself some basic tools, 
I quickly crafted a wooden pickaxe, then I dug down, and then I got myself enough stone to make a stone pickaxe, a stone shovel, and a stone hoe. Now looking back on this, I don't know why I made a hoe. I would have been much better off with a sword or something else, but I thought maybe I would need to get hay bales for food, although you'll see later that we didn't even need food at all in this run. So after I crafted all these tools, I just jumped into the lake, I grabbed some gravel to get some flint, and then I broke enough gravel until I got the two flint pieces that I needed. This would be necessary to craft a fletching table so I could actually convert one of the villages that were in any of the villages that I ran through and turn him into a fletching villager so that way I could both get emeralds and I could get arrows which would be necessary for the last death of this run. So once I arrived in the village I crafted myself the fletching table and then placed it down and converted one of the villages into a fletcher but the first one that I did get didn't have any of the traits that I wanted so I broke it, placed it back down again and then the second fletcher that I got actually had both of the traits that I was looking for. This was great, so I went ahead, crafted a bunch of sticks, and got ready to go trade with the villager, but it turned to nighttime and everyone started going to sleep, so I slept the night and then just went ahead and found the villager the next morning. And after giving him my half a stack of sticks, getting the emerald, and then buying some arrows, it was time to get started on the next death that I would achieve in this run. Now, I had just recently slept the night, and it didn't occur to me until after the fact that I actually needed it to be nighttime, but this wasn't actually too big of a deal, and you'll see how I combat that later on in this speedrun. So instead of it being nighttime, I just got started on the next death, and that was going to be through starvation. And this is where changing the difficulty comes in clutch. So if you aren't familiar already, if you play Minecraft on peaceful, easy, or normal mode, you physically cannot die to starvation. In fact, starvation acts really similar to the way that poison does, in the sense that it leaves you all the way down to half a heart, but it will never actually kill you. However, if you play on hard or hardcore, you can die to starvation, and it doesn't just leave you at half a heart, but instead it finishes you off completely, and you're going to just die if you don't eat food. So with all that in mind, I went ahead and set up what I call the starvation station, and I put a bunch of blocks just on the side of one of the villager houses, and then sprint ran up and down as fast as I could, hitting my head on this little roof that I had built and I kept on doing that until my hunger slowly but surely depleted until it was left with nothing. And once I'd successfully just completely gotten rid of all my hunger, I built up on top of the house that I had been doing everything on. I jumped off to weaken myself quite a fair bit and I just waited it out until I just died of starvation. And now with that death out of the way and complete, I went ahead and grabbed all the materials that I did drop just before. And with the seventh death done and out of the way, I went ahead and just grabbed the axe and the wood that I dropped before I ended up dying. I packed up all my materials that I had banked in the chest before, and I set off to complete the rest of this speedrun. Now the last three things that I had on my list was to die from throwing an enderpearl, blowing myself up either with TNT or other means, and of course shooting myself with a bow and arrow. Now the shooting yourself is a pretty interesting one, I could have done this with dispensers as well but it would have been a lot more complicated and there was just no need. And using a skeleton to shoot me wouldn't really count because a skeleton is a mob and because I already died to the iron golem, I can't just die to two different mobs and count that as two different things. So in order to combat that, I wasn't going to use dispensers, I couldn't use a skeleton, so I just went with the easy route and went ahead to try and craft the bow, which I would then use to shoot myself at some point in this run. That's also the reason why I grabbed the arrows from the Fletcher just before, because without those arrows, I wouldn't even have any ammunition to shoot the bow entirely. But nonetheless, I actually kind of gave up on the whole temple idea, because I figured that there would be a much easier way to do the explosion death, which wasn't using any TNT. In fact, the only thing that I really needed to do the explosive death was a bed and some obsidian and flint and steel and other stuff, but the bed was the key part of this death. And that of course, if you didn't guess it already, is putting a bed in the nether and then trying to sleep in it. Now, when you put a bed in the nether or in the end, for a matter of fact, and then you try to sleep in it, you all know that it just blows up and causes havoc. Now, I had a bit of a discussion with my Twitch chat, and we sort of came to the conclusion that dying to TNT and dying to a bed in the nether would count as the same death, because they still are explosions, even though one of them falls under the category of intentional game design, and the other one is just a regular explosion. I just said that it would pretty much equal the same thing, so I went with the bed strategy because that was much easier to find than a temple. So the next step from here was of course to run around and find a lava pool which I would then use to build a nether portal and I could actually collect that death on my list. However along my journey I also found this crack in the floor which had two endermen in it which was perfect for the enderpearl death that I was going to need. So as you would do I quickly crafted up a boat to make the kill a lot easier. I dealt with the creeper that came out of the cave and then I managed to get the endermen that was underneath 
this little crack in the floor into a boat and a zombie also decided to jump in and hop in with the enderman. I killed the enderman with no problems at all and then the little brat zombie also took my enderpearl as soon as it dropped. So after quickly dealing with him as well, I took my enderpearl and then set off to find the lava pool that I needed. It wasn't too long until I found exactly what I had hoped for. So once I had reached the lava pool, I set my spawn and began to pillar up into the sky. Now, I only had one enderpearl on me and not multiple, so I couldn't throw pearls until I died from pure pearl damage. So of course, the way that I could combat this was by building up as high as I needed to and then just taking a bunch of damage over and over again until I was left with half a heart and then I would throw the enderpearl, which would then finish me off. So to do that, I built a little staircase just next to the lava pool. I also set my spawn with the bed that I was carrying around and I jumped off of it over and over again until I was left with half a heart where I threw the ender pearl and I got my eighth death of this run. So now I was left with two more deaths that I needed to complete. The explosion that I've been talking about throughout the entirety of this run and the bow and arrow death, which I also couldn't really complete right now. To complete the bow and arrow death, I was definitely going to need it to be nighttime and we still had a lot of time to kill. So my best bet was to probably go and get a bucket, get some water, and then build the nether portal that I would need so I could do the explosion death in the meantime. So to do that, I ran back over to the nearby village that I had looted before, and I took another bed because I needed one to set my spawn point right next to the lava pool, and I of course needed the bed that would blow me up in the nether. I also pillared up on one of the houses that was near the iron golem, and then I punched it to grab its attention, where I swiftly finished it off and grabbed the four iron that it dropped. Now while, I was, now while I was doing this, someone in my chat actually reminded me that cats also have a chance to drop string. And at first, I was a little bit hesitant to go around killing cats to make the bow that I needed. But eventually I gave in because I wanted to finish this run as fast as I could. I'm not a psycho, guys. Uh, trust me. Tr I am completely sane. I am completely sane. Die. Die. Come back. Come back. Come back. Die. Yes! <laughs> Two strings! Guys, I'm not- I'm not a psycho, I'm not a psycho. I am completely sane. Yes, come back. Stop running from me. Come back. Die. Okay, one more. There's one more. Give me- give me my string. Bro and after that questionable detour, I took my two string and four iron and ran back over to the lava pool to continue with what I was doing before. But when I arrived, I kind of forgot that I needed water to build the portal as well. So once I'd crafted my bucket and I was just chilling at the lava pool, I had no food and no hunger left. So I just walked really slowly to the nearby lake, filled my bucket with water and very slowly trekked back to the lava pool. Now, I know I'm going to get absolutely roasted in the comments because um, I kind of don't know how to build a nether portal the quick way. It probably would have been best if I had at least practiced before this run, but I promise, guys, for my next speedruns, I'll figure out how to do the cool kids way, but I made it work with some other weird block placing shenanigans. Yes, I am professional. Okay, wait. Um, do that. Yeah, don't worry guys, I am a speedrunner, obviously. I know exactly what I'm doing. Dream on right? <laughs> we don't say things like that. Bro, I'm good at this game. I'm really good at this game. Trust. Bro, I'm actually so quick. Like, you guys have never seen anything like it. It's crazy. I know, it's really slow, but eventually we got it working. Ta-da, the nether portal is now finally complete. And then after I built the nether portal, I also realized that I completely forgot to get flint. So I didn't even have a flint and steel that I could light it with. But one thing that I did have was wood. And because there was lava ever so conveniently next to my nether portal, I placed two blocks of wood in the lava so that the fire had a chance to spread onto the wood block and then into the portal. And then I just walked over to a nearby creeper as it was nighttime now and blew myself up. This was intentional because I didn't have any hunger or food and because I had no hunger left and I couldn't sprint, I figured the easiest way to just reset that was to die to any mob and there just happened to be a creeper there so I did that pretty easily. But once I'd collected all my items back and then came back over to the nether portal, I realized that it was actually lit. I was really surprised and quite happy that it was easy to do that because that way I didn't even have to go and get a piece of flint to then light the nether portal. I did not hesitate to place the chest down and then dump all my items in there as well. And then once I walked into the portal, I placed the bed down, right clicked it and just spontaneously combusted, which was able to bring our death count to 9 out of 10. 
And now that we had done nine of the 10 deaths in this run and the run was coming to a close, it couldn't be more perfect for it to be nighttime now. And that made it the perfect opportunity to hunt down some spiders and finish off this run once and for all. This is just a cheat sheet. You just take a bed with you and then if you die, and like b before you die, just don't die. That made no sense. Where are the sp spider? Spider. We got this, bro. We got this. Hello there. Die. What? You actually smell bad. Oh, that spider smelled like, um, cheese biscuits. Yep, that's exactly correct. <gasps> spider. Die. Cool, we got it, 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 got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I just need- I just need to craft a bow, okay? Just let me- let me be. Thank you. Do that. Alright, we have- we have the mats. We've got the mats, guys. Is this it? Are we done after this? I think it's finished after this. What the hell? How are we almost finished? Bye. Alright. Let's just shoot myself. No, Creeper is not taking the credit. Creeper is not taking the credit. GG's, that's it, that, that's it, that's it, we did it guys, we, we did it. Recap, what do we do today? Well, I ran into the cactus over there somewhere and died to that. Then I suffocated in the sand, then I drowned here, jumped off of this cliff, ran to the village and then died to the golem. Then I found the ruined portal and died to the magma blocks, which counts as burning or fire, whatever you want to call it. Then I starved myself to death, I used a pearl to die, I blew myself up in the nether, and I shot myself with a bow and arrow, and I'm getting ganked by a spider. So yeah, all in all, a uh, pretty successful run, 26 minutes, quite nice indeed. But yeah, it's been done, so well done boys, GG's. And with all of that being said, this speedrun was officially complete. Overall, this challenge was quite interesting to say the least, and honestly, I had an absolute blast producing this video. If you did make it this far, then click the like button and subscribe to the channel, because I plan to post more of these videos for the weeks to come, and I'm almost positive that you won't want to miss those as well. Also, just a friendly reminder that this speedrun was streamed live over on my Twitch, so if that does interest you, the links are down in the description below. I don't just do these speedruns on my Twitch as well, we do a lot of other fun interactive games with viewers, so if you are interested in anything like that, it's always worth a shot. But with all that being said, that is going to wrap up everything that I did have for today's video, and as always, take care, and peace. Um, and I can shoot myself. Sand, and then drowning should be easy, because then I can go nether and just blow up. One of you's right now, you. I did not kill your family. What? Come back, jump off something high to weaken myself. I need to set my spawn, and I also need to blow myself up. How many deaths have I occurred? Eight. I just need to shoot myself and blow myself up. I'm not a psycho.